everyone welcome to a new vlog this week i am doing something and i'm not entirely sure i should be <laughs> so there's a video that i'll try and put up in the corner here from three years ago where i took down everything to do with crafting or pretty much everything to do with crafting i decided there wasn't space in this room for that I took it down to the basement and my intention was that I would use the basement sort of kitchen area because it was once rented out as a flat um, as my crafting space however the three years since I did that I don't know I've probably used it two maybe three times uh, what tends to happen if I've got a card I want to make or a quick project, I grab what I need and I bring it up here because down there there is no natural light, it's very cold in winter, in the summer I feel like I should be up here because I've got the nice summer view, it's, it's just really sort of a bit, it's a bit dingy down there basically the, and the lighting is awful, there's like a really old fashioned one of those old strip lights that goes across and then this oh it's just really not very good and there's no room for the tripod to film what I'm doing so that puts me off doing projects because of course I film everything and there's definitely no room to balance the tripod on the table down there and do the thingamajig so that the camera can look down on what it is I'm making so I've made the decision to bring everything back up from the basement and into here <sighs> I hope I'm doing the right thing it's just that I don't know if you saw a few weeks ago it was a long time ago actually I did talk about starting an art journal um, it's just here actually on this pile and I did this pull it fly. I did this double page spread it's not brilliant but I really enjoyed doing it and I said in that video I really would like to carry on yeah I just basically I'm waffling on about the fact that I just never get around to it's so uninviting I never go down there and so I think overall I think I possibly am doing the right thing right so I've got the camera facing this way which is not a way I usually show you and that's because behind me is just a bit of a chaotic mess it's where because the i come in the door and if there's anything that i want to get out of the living room i just pile it up on the floor you know it becomes a little bit of a dumping ground things just get piled up here i've had a bit of a tidy up already this is the only area that i think i can utilize for my craft stuff so let me show you so in the corner this is what i think i could change this is this is a possibility so we have this chest of drawers that is also quite new for this room and that's what I've started to put my art supplies in I actually had a rejig about of this the other day oh that's that's so satisfying so that's all nice and tidy all my art stuff is in there we've got a bit of a gap in this one not much but there's definitely room for a bit more crafty things in there so downstairs I've got a chest of drawers that's the main thing uh, a stack of stacking boxes and a trolley of paper and a couple of drawers full of paper and bits <laughs> I'll take you down there in a second and show you these are my options I balance the second chest of drawers on top of that chest of drawers and move all that to be honest these two children's mannequins I really don't use anymore um, the teenager one sometimes comes in handy if I've got a if I've got a custom order for a dress for someone that is quite small is very petite then I do use that one but I don't use this other one at all really both of those can be moved somewhere else potentially this one could as well but I do use that more frequently for displaying clothes and the stuff on top here I can put elsewhere in the room that shouldn't be too much trouble we've got a big old vintage trunk here one day i'll show you what's inside that's where i keep all my antique clothing that i'm too scared to cut up <laughs> so that can't really go anywhere else but those two vintage sewing, sewing machines i could put those downstairs instead and rejig these baskets to go on top and the chest of drawers could fit there potentially 
And the other thing I have here is a built-in cupboard. I'm gonna leave that top shelf alone because I can't reach it anyway. But these two shelves here, there's potential there to rejig stuff around. That's jewelry making stuff. And there is room there, above there. I don't even really know what's in that box there. So definitely potential there. And definitely potential below that there's this cupboard. There's stuff in here on that shelf that could probably move somewhere else. But then below it, I can't even open this cupboard door because I have these heavy rolls of leather that my friend managed to source for me. It's really good quality leather. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna make with it yet, but I think I'm gonna to have to move that somewhere else so that I can have full access to this cupboard. I mean, potentially I could move all of that and it's all leather pieces and offcuts inside there as well because not only was I thinking of making clothing with the leather, I also do pyrography which is like uh, which I can burn onto wood or leather. So I've just gathered bits of that as I've come across it <laughs> in the past and I'm hoarding that. But anyway that stuff could potentially be moved and I could fit the chest of, I might be able to fit the chest of drawers in there. Um, anyway so I've got a bit of thinking to do, a bit of moving about to do and I think I'm just going to get started. Let's just get on with this. So as you might know if you've been watching my videos for a while, this camera really does brighten up the area. So this is it, this is the crafting area. You can see this little patch of sunlight, that's because it's the evening and the sun has just gone round to the door behind me. But it is not nearly as bright as that in real life. Let me put the light on and show you what exactly we've got. And that's the other thing is this area just gets so messy because I can't properly get to everything. I bought this bargain vintage good solid cabinet with two drawers and a double cupboard underneath. I'm going to leave the stuff in the cupboard but the stuff in the drawers I would like to take upstairs if I can because this is my card making things. I've got a, a scrapbook and a covered notebook there that I'm halfway through making. Um, yeah, this is card making stuff, envelopes and things. And then the top drawer, which I can't, oh, I'm not going to, no, I can't open that one handed, it's so heavy. That's full of my 12 by 12 paper. <laughs> and these boxes are going to stay down here. That's full of my pyrography things. So if I was going to sell any of it, I'd just grab those boxes. This is the stack of storage, I don't know what you'd call that really, shelves. That's to go up and then and I've got, and this is my problem as well. I keep things like, <laughs> like this baker's box because it's a good solid box that could definitely be a cover for a, a, a scrapbook. <laughs> okay, if I pick this up, you can start to see there is a chest of drawers under there. This used to be, as I mentioned in the old video, <laughs> I think it was my dad's when he was a child and then it became mine when I was a child. When I had it, it was red. You can sort of see the red paint on the edges there. And then I painted it purple and did the flower fairy decoupage when my daughter had it in her bedroom. So that is what's coming up. The, the chest of drawers, the stacking shelves, the contents of these two drawers and hopefully my spellbinder's grand calibre. The stuff on this table, which is random crafting stuff. There's my little tub of glittery inky things. And then over this side, I've got this trolley of A4 and A5 and bits of card and paper. And this is the thing, I, I need to use it up. That's why I need to move it somewhere where I'm gonna use it. So that's gotta come up too.
Okay, it's the next day. You can't tell yet, but I am wearing leggings today, whereas yesterday I was bare-legged. <laughs> That's how you can tell the difference. Oh, it's sad, isn't it? It's just been a bit of a measure. If you're in the UK, you'll know, but it's been a pretty miserable August, really, and it just feels like autumn already, and I'm not ready for autumn. Are you? Tell me, are you an autumn person? It's not for me, it just... To me, autumn is just about drizzle and cold coming, and those crispy, sunny days don't seem to come around often enough for my for me to love autumn. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I didn't manage to finish doing this bit yesterday. I just ran out of energy. I'm still gonna. It takes me a while to recover from things like doing the fairy festival. It just takes it so much out of me. If you're new here, I've got a couple of autoimmune diseases and it mainly affects me, affects me with tiredness and lack of energy. So I'm always, I do have a bit of a strategy. So if you're on a similar sort of boat, um, then this might help. I don't know if it's just me, but I really can only do physical activity for about 20 minutes. It's not very long and it's very frustrating living like this, but uh, this is how I do it. So. I do activity for about 20 minutes and then I just sit down and do something else for, and it doesn't take me long, like four or five minutes to recover from that 20 minutes. So I just have to always have two activities on the go, one sitting down and one busy. So as you might know if you've been watching my recent videos, I am listing a whole load of clothing on my Threads of a Fairy Tale website because I've been building up lots of stock over the last year or so and I've only just recently done the photos for them. So I sit down and I do a bit of that and then I get back up and I carry on and then I sit down and then I get back up. Um, but yesterday evening I, I just thought, oh, no, I can't do any more. So carrying on today but before I cover this up with the chest of drawers which I think is going to go here I'll just show you the fireplace because in the video before last I mentioned how I keep my clothing stock down in the basement and I showed sort of the ent outside entrance to it well that sparked quite a lot of interest in the house so I'll try and remember and I'll try to remember to tell you a bit more about it as we sort of go along so this room is actually from the Georgian extension. So when you see clips of the living room, that is the old bit of the house. That was built in 1640. This bit, just by guessing, is Georgian. Obviously Georgian spans a long period of time, but we don't know. We don't know exactly when this bit was built. But we can sort of tell from the floorboards. Um, the floorboards in there are foot wide elm boards really nice boards whereas in here we've got much narrower and i think they're pine i'm not the best at identifying wood but i, I think oh hello Merlin. hello uh, but the window behind the camera there is it one of those giant really nice big georgian windows this one isn't so i think this has been altered in recent years but upstairs here we've got Georgian windows as well. So what else to tell you about it? This is actually the best room in the house. I'm very lucky to have it as my studio because the it's the only room in the house with a southwest facing window. So it's the only room that gets any light in the afternoon. It, we more or less sort of face southeast and so the afternoon the house can get really quite dark apart from this room. So yeah I'm very lucky to have it. And there were obviously in the house there was, um, we don't have a lot of history about the house unfortunately, but there was obviously, obviously some renovations done in the sort of 1920s, 30s time we think, because the fireplace in the living room used to be like this one, and I think this is sort of a 1930s fireplace. I'll give it a bit of a clean and I'll show you close up. So here we are, here's a bit more of a close up of the fireplace pretty sure that this is 1930s one day we will rip it all out and replace it there was one very similar to this in the living room which we just pulled out because this will be a nice stone wall behind it which we might expose not sure I very much doubt that there's a nice fireplace behind this but you never know 
and um, yeah these are the floorboards I was talking about so they've done that classic thing that they did about 150 years ago where they had a rug up to this point and then they painted the edges <laughs> so yeah we do have an example of that trick that they used to do back in the day so I don't know if the chest of drawers will fit in that space there I don't think they will so it might sit on the edge of the fireplace I'm not sure let's just bring it up and try So this little bit is looking quite neat and tidy. Obviously where everything's been pushed back, the rest of the room is looking a little bit crowded. But anyway, let's skip over that. I thought you might like to see in detail what it is that I've got over here. So this basket here, on top is a silk top that I started years ago. It wasn't going very well, so I just chucked it down, got a bit fed up with it. <laughs> so that's still sitting there. And then this basket is mainly full of underwear elastic. Um, I buy in job lots from eBay because that's the most cost effective way of doing things. And a, an underwear shop was closing down and they were getting rid of all of their underwear elastic. So I thought, yep, yeah, I'll nab that. Um, so and the problem is, of course, is that there's too much for me to ever use. I probably need to resell or give away some of this. Um, but it is very useful. I'm finding it very useful. And we've got some zips in the back here as well. This is off of a wedding dress, so that's to re ready to reuse. And um, I think oh, there's a collection of zips in the back. So this is my sort of fastenings basket, if you like. This one underneath is vintage buys from the vintage fair in a frame mainly. Yeah, just having somewhere nice to store them until I can bring myself, I need to tuck that in, until I can bring myself to risk sewing with the fabric. And then over here, sadly my bookends, um, I've got two of these lovely fairies, oh, need a bit of a dust, fairies sitting on books, a stack of books, but they were a um, tragedy, tragedy of when we moved house. The, they both got damaged, which is a shame. Um, but they're good and heavy. <laughs> I probably should replace them, really. This bag here, I think, is all... Yeah, we've got some Victorian christening gowns here that need a light bleach wash. They were waiting for summer. <laughs> now, summer's pretty much over, so I need to hurry up and do that because they need to be hung outside to dry. So yeah, that, I need to remember to do that. Underneath we've got a basket of patterns. These are mainly patterns that were my mum's or my nan's or some were from my brother-in-law's mum's. Um, and I bought this cloak pattern from eBay. Also I've got a couple of old nighties just to use as a pattern to cut around. But yeah, they're mostly sort of 1960s, 1970s patterns, which I occasionally use haven't done for a long time have to admit but i'm thinking about getting back into that um in fact i've bought let me take you over to the stack over here that i moved i bought a couple of sewing magazines recently which i've never done before and they came with some some patterns and i really love this dress i would love to give that a go so in fact i need to put these in that basket and that basket is resting on two vintage sewing machines. This is from Edwardian times and is a hand crank beautiful sewing machine. If you want to see it, if you click on my name and go back to the front page of my YouTube space, then you'll actually, if you scroll down to most popular, I think it is still... It's still my most watched video every single day. It's my most watched video and it's from like five or six years ago. It's a bit embarrassing. It's not the best video in the world at all. And um, yeah, it's just typical that that happens to be my most watched video. 
and also embarrassing because I don't really use it. I intended to, but I haven't done. This one, again, was from my brother-in-law's mother who um, has sadly passed away, but this sewing machine was the one I used for my recent videos making the patchwork cushion covers for the van. Yeah, it is works like a dream. I loved using it, so definitely will be keeping that handy. Right, I'm, I'm gonna sit down for the drawers. Let me bring my chair around. <laughs> this, by the way, took me hours. Abs hours and hours I spent in the evenings in front of the telly cutting these out. They have survived really well. They must be about 20 years old, I reckon. Yeah, I could do with, I didn't really finish. I cleaned the top, I didn't clean these bits. That's just typical of me. Right, this drawer is pieces of scrap paper. Any bits and pieces that are cut off, left, not used. We've got a little scrap pack there. Bits of wallpaper, bit crammed in, need to um, definitely use some of this paper up uh, in this drawer. We've got, it is, I did organise it fairly well. Um, if you go back and watch the video I mentioned earlier of when I took it downstairs into the basement. So this is all tags, all the tags are here. Um, so it has got a little messed up. Uh, we've got, got alphabet here as well. I think most of the alphabet stuff has come out because I've used it for birthday cards and such like. Tags, oh and charms, we've got um, some charms here. And I guess I've kept all these little bits of ribbon and thread to tie the tags with. Next one. I want to take these stickers out actually because I know where I'm going to use them. So we've got some embellishments, perhaps some embellishments, and I think we've got fairy stuff and fairy tale stuff. I've kept it in all its bags that it came with because they so they all go and I know where to find all the matching bits so it's difficult for you to see I'm afraid. This is the flower fairy pack. Um, I bought off eBay um, ready to make a scrapbook with. And then we've got various so we've got an Alice in Wonderland set of some more sort of vintage flower fairy stuff. I'll put that with the other stuff. And then underneath we've got we've got magically um, embellishments at the back, sort of whimsically stuff there, crowns to stick onto fairies and stuff such like. We've got I think these are Halloweeny bits at the back here. Yeah, spooky spooky bits of embellishments there. Um, and then this one at the front is all floral embellishments, I think. Oh, we've got some Disney things. I'll give those to Jude. Um, I'm really hoping that now that this is up here, I will just get round to doing the scrapbooking and the crafting, paper crafting stuff much more often. The bottom drawer, I think, is mainly vintage stuff. So we've got vintage travel. Oh, yeah, we've also got steampunky stuff down here as well. And I guess stuff that didn't belong anywhere else some stamps I can put in travel journals. On the left we've got old oh, stickers and embellishments. So yeah that's what's in those drawers. I'll do a bit more sorting and then I'll show you what's over in those racks there as well. But I am also going to need, need to get to this cupboard um, because there is some space in there I'm going to utilise and that shelf can definitely be swapped around. I can take down into the basement those folders there. That's just, those are actually old, those are actually copies of my books that I've written. <laughs> Haven't mentioned that in a while, but I, I do like writing. I think there's an old copy of Be In The Place, which has been published. And then the rest are, there are two more uh, young adult novels that I wrote and then the publisher changed their mind so they were never actually published so those are in the folders there they can go downstairs they can just be stored away for now 
and other bits and pieces in there can go downstairs in the basement as well. So, these heavy rolls of leather are somewhat blocking my way along with this heavy load of net. I might have to move the net into the corner and the leather, well actually, do you know what I'm thinking of because I really need to make some space in this room rather than leaving that until I'm feeling ready to use it I'm just gonna go for it I'm just gonna use this leather it's really good quality but it's quite thick so it's gonna be very difficult to it's gonna have to be like punched and um, it's not like soft leather that will easily make clothing but it's just gorgeous I mean look at the sort of marks on that I really love that vintagey look but that's why I managed to get it at a, a really good cost because of course that's no good for people who want to make shoes with it apparently some of this leather was even for from the Dr Martin's factory so I'm just gonna go for it I think I might make leather work one of my upcoming projects yeah see what we can make with this as long as I let go of any pressure I think this could be really good fun actually that's not too bad that's not too bad at all so uh, I can't keep pretending that the fairy festival didn't happen I do have to empty the van apart from push things about a bit so I could get my clothes out of that drawer there I um, I really have just left it I just didn't want to deal with it but we realized because I've just run out here now at 20 to 8 because it has stopped raining. We had a little pause in the rain earlier. We took Merlin out for his afternoon walk. And then it's just been really grey and drizzly all week. And we were a bit worried because the fridge is on. The food that we took to the fairy festival is still in the fridge. But we're not quite sure that this uh, overcast weather that we're having will be enough to power the solar panels, which power the fridge. So I've got to get in here and clear some of this out. I'm not going to do the clothes or anything, I'm just going to do this stuff in here that's that's in the way. <laughs> just going to spend no more than 15 minutes because I'm cold, I'm goose, goose pimply. Hopefully doing this will warm me up but yeah, basically I'm just going to get some of this done and then it's all progress isn't it, it will all get done in the end. washing up got the food the leftover food that I'll do for now that's everything that's got to go in the garage and because I'm clearing up space down in the basement where that purple chest of drawers was that's where I'm gonna stack up some of this festival stuff because then that will free up a little bit more room in the other room where it was which had been getting a bit cramped and a bit busy in there so this is all good I'm really pleased real productive couple of days I think
fits perfectly next to each other. I'm so happy how well that fits. This rack, I have to commend. It was a very cheap rack from um, Amazon, but it's so sturdy, but it's really heavy. It is getting a little bit wobbly. I am a little concerned about it, but like I've been saying, now that it's all here, hopefully I'll actually use it more often. I am a little bit embarrassed showing you how much of a craft stash I have because but bear in mind I am a hoarder this isn't stuff I went out and bought in a couple of days you know this is over a long period of years we're now almost there not much more to come up now but I do need to find a new home for my ribbon reel rack that uh, Rain bought me we don't have many nails about the house about the room um, so I'll have to think about that hello everyone it's another day and I think it's all caught up on me. I think I've been a bit over enthusiastic over the last couple of days. I'm actually running a little bit ahead of schedule because we've got a trip coming up and I know I'm not going to be able to edit much that week. So I'm trying to keep a little bit ahead. So it's actually only been one week since we got back from the New Forest Fairy Festival. And yeah, I think it's all just caught up on me a bit today plus yesterday we had a barbecue with everyone from Chris's office so I think any social event like that is gonna just take it out of me a bit as well so today is another day where I've got the house to myself now if you saw a video a little while ago of when I had the first day to myself in blooming years <laughs> definitely months uh, you'll know how much it meant to me so now that the kids are back at work it's a little bit more frequent like even if it's just an hour or so I get in the house to myself and I appreciate it so much but today I feel like I've wasted it a bit I haven't I've just been too you know when you just sort of zoned out of things it, you don't quite I can't quite concentrate on anything um, so I've sort of given up really. I managed to get one item listed in the Etsy shop But I haven't put it on the threads of a fairy tale website yet. So I've still got that to do today I still haven't edited anything yet today And I know if I don't do an hour at least an hour every day then that catches up on me as well and uh, Bites me in the bum later in the week when I've got a deadline. I'm just gonna <laughs> sort of do that later <laughs> And um, I'm going to take an hour or so to enjoy myself and do a bit of art again. So, oh, it's still behind me. Can you see it? Yeah, there we are. This one, um, which I did, was that last week or the week before? I think that was last week, wasn't it? So that oil pastel there still has it. It's still sitting there because it is not drying. It's not drying at all. I don't know how long that's going to have to sit there or I'll just eventually just give up and close the sketchbook. So today I'm going to be doing a watercolour because I'm going to continue my sort of mission, if you like, this year of finding my style and my medium for art. So today I'm doing watercolour and I've got a new set of pen uh, paintbrushes which I think I showed you when they came a little while ago. I went on a little ramble about the types of brushes that I like. So I'm testing these out for the first time. They were quite cheap from Amazon. I think they were eight pounds, if I remember rightly. But they look like they've got a good, nice point on the end. So I'm gonna give those a try. And I've been watching um, a channel called CC Create. And she does these lovely watercolors. And she also often uses gold or metallic paints. So I was very inspired by her to order myself a little set of gouache, I, don't, I think that's how you say it, uh, metallic paints. So I might have a little play with these. And because I'm not feeling, what's the word? I'm not feeling inspired, maybe. I'm not feeling all that inspired today or I'm not feeling confident, maybe that's the word. I'm not feeling confident in my own abilities today to, to create a painting. So I'm gonna copy one. And I think for now, at least that's fine. I th Well, I think at any time, 
in your career as an artist so that's fine as long as you um, don't try and pass it off as your own or you give the inspiration credit so I've sat down well I'm about to sit down with these three books two one of which I've had for years and I got it off the bookshelf again the other day oh, well I'll show you actually I'll bring the tripod over and show you those in a, in a second and I'm gonna look for a picture to copy or at least to give me you know a base an idea <laughs> at least to give me an idea um, and maybe I'll take it in my own direction we shall see how we go again like with all these things I keep mentioning I haven't done a lot of watercolors for a long long time so we'll just see how we go and just sort of have fun with it and then I think tomorrow I will carry on with my room and the more physical energetic stuff that needs doing by the way Merlin is being very restless in the background even though I've been playing with him outside for a while so if you can hear huffing and panting and moving about that's him okay so I'm using this very old set of WH Smith watercolors I obviously didn't clean my palette when I was last using it probably because I hate the waste of paint I can't I, I'll probably I'm probably thinking do you know what I'll just add a bit of water and use that later now the cat is jangling in the background <laughs> so these are the paints I'm using so nothing special um, but still a nice wooden box and these are the books that I'm thinking of finding something to inspire me so these two are new abstract nature by Oh dear, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly. Waltroid Noratil. Noratil? Painting the natural world with acrylics, watercolour and mixed media. So, yeah, this... This gives quite good step-by-step -step instructions if you want to follow completely and, and really learn his techniques. This one, Painting Expressive Landscapes by Carol Robson. Yeah, this is because I do, like I've said in the Patreon video, I do want to try and learn how to do abstract landscapes. That's exactly what I want to try and learn. So that's why I picked this one up. And then this is my old one that I've had a long time. Watercolour Fun and Free by Carlin Holman. Finding the path between your heart and your hand. I like that. Um, and I actually really like some of her style. I want to, next time perhaps, I want to give this style a go. It was a bit like that Stonehenge one I think I showed you before that is like a bit of ink and a bit of watercolour. Um, but again, I found this one quite inspiring. I know I've, I think I've copied this one before or this one I feel like I've looked at this a lot when I was um, a bit younger maybe it was that one I think somewhere in a sketchbook I have had a go at a couple of these already but yeah I found that quite inspiring and definitely something to definitely something to look at for ideas all three of these books by the way have a section with poppies <laughs> there must be definitely something about them that artists like okay so this is the watercolor paper I'm using I did this picture while we were in America this is with ink tents pencils and sticks it still needs work I think I still need to definitely add some more contrast build some layers there's too much emphasis on the trees at the moment and you can't very well see the figure of the fairy which I kind of like I quite like the fact that she blends into the background I don't know maybe I'll just leave it it was a, it was a fun thing to try um, I think just the perhaps the composition isn't quite right there and then I'd forgotten about this one I've obviously started one I, I think this is from a photo shoot of me when I was modeling a mermaid style fairy tale dress for threads of a fairy tale and that's obviously as far as I got that day I don't remember doing that <laughs> but that's definitely with ink tents as well so enough waffle I'm probably just procrastinating here let's find a picture and I'm gonna um, get on with this let's find something right the dog is eating now sorry if you can hear that in the background 
this is the picture I've chosen so this is from this book and I'm just gonna have fun but what I intend to do I think reading this she has used masking fluid to make these marks and then she's done other marks with a toothbrush but instead of that instead of using um scratching away at the paint that's where I'm gonna have a try with the gold and see how it looks Drawing these gold lines took me so long. Basically the paintbrush just was too thick. So I wasn't getting those nice fine lines and I really, I've not used gouache. I can't say that seriously. Now let's just say it confidently. Say it, act like I know what exactly it is. So I haven't used gouache since I was about nine years old when I bought a set in France on holiday. Obviously I've still got those exact same paints as you might expect from me. Yeah I'll have to get those out soon, give them a try if they've not dried up. Anyway I haven't used gouache for a very long time so I don't know if this is typical but I really struggled. I literally could only get a couple of millimetres before the paint came off the tip of the brush so I've been constantly dipping it back in to try and get those fine lines and I'm a bit disappointed that I've got some quite thick lines of gra grass here so I know that if I'm going to try this again another time I will have to find an even finer brush than the one I was using and I thought that was pretty fine I'll be honest or don't use it don't use a paintbrush perhaps perhaps this was a situation where a gold a uh, pen would have been a better option anyway here we are here's the finished picture as you can see the lights have now gone on it got too dark in here so I, so i'll probably show this to you again tomorrow where you might be able to see it a bit better but it might actually be better in the light let me hang on the sparkles of the paint the gold paint might actually pick up a little better in in under this light but I'm quite pleased with how glittery the paint is I really like it what I've learned is as well as to go finer on the brush is I could have gone and should have gone darker on the background so that the gold would have popped a bit better um, if you compare it to over here that is a much darker background and I should have done that but I'm always nervous to go dark. I need to get over that. So yeah, this is the close up picture and I'll show you again tomorrow in daylight. Right, so this tub here is what was on the table down in the basement and this stack here is half of the paper that was in that top drawer of the cabinet so yeah gotta make some room so it's another day i've um squirreled away a little bit of energy and i'm carrying on with my room um i'm gonna really try and get this finished this evening it's already quarter to seven though i think i've left it a bit late in the day but we shall see we'll give it a try So currently the uh, this big bag of tutu net is leaning up here 
with the rolls of leather sort of leaning up against the shelves here. But actually, I don't think I needed to move that leather, annoyingly. So over in this corner, which is where I was, it turns out that box there can't really be moved anyway. There's nowhere else for that to go. So I can only, I've only emptied half of that top shelf that I intended to use for crafting stuff. So actually that cupboard doesn't necessarily need to open until I'm at the point where I need to get to all this leather which is in the cupboard underneath. So I've emptied that out. Some of it, some of it is straightforward. This is a pile of folders of yeah, rejection letters <laughs> and old correspondence and old drafts of young adult books that I've written. But some of it is just stuff I'm not really sure what to do with. I think I could jumble sell that, that's intact enough. And then I've got this, you know, it's like little bits of stationery, bits of paper that I thought might be useful one day. Some more beads under here, some pen refills, you know, bits and bobs that, oh, I'm not really sure what to do with. And in fact, under, under this lot, I've got a shoebox of childhood crafting stuff. I won't look too closely, it's pretty dusty inside that box. Mainly with silk painting paints, kindly given to me by my aunt and uncle. They used to always give me crafty things for my birthday and Christmas, and I loved it. So grateful for them. And I think all they're going to need is a little bit of... The purple seems fine still. I think these are good quality paints so I might get those out and there's also these little tubes of watercolour paints which I don't remember actually I don't quite remember where these came from Nicola gave me some watercolours I think they might have been those and then I've got these this is obviously some crafty project that I tried hang on let me put this down see if I can separate it right well we've got a couple of well I'm pretty sure are flowers and then we've got a tangle, which I think is meant to be branches of a tree. I know my cousin, I think she made um, this wire tree I remember seeing in their house. And I think I was trying to replicate that. Hmm, well, it was probably fun. But what to do with it now? Is that wire useful for anything? Hmm. This is why I hate tidying up. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> So I managed to empty that tub, that fridge drawer, <laughs> of all the other bits and pieces. Most of it fit in the white chest of drawers over there. But I can't believe it, I've managed to get all my 12 by 12 paper in there. Plus these um, sketchbooks which I bought, oh gosh they're really dusty from where they were behind the baskets. The, these watercolour pads were being sold in Tesco's. Um, really really cheaply I don't know like 20p a pad or something like that it's actually really rubbish paper <laughs> but I haven't tried it on the back I was just looking let me show you quickly and in fact I've talked about this paper before and I thought it was from the works and it's not so I feel a bit bad about that so if you if this will focus can you see those little it's almost like dotted texture or sort of honeycomb texture I suppose actually and it's almost like they've done this texture to make it seem like it's watercolour paper, but it really, I don't know, I didn't have much luck with it. But it, I've just seen it does say 160 GSM. That's pretty good. So I might give that another try. But I've also never painted on the back, which is smooth. 
Um, so maybe I should just try the paper on the back, but I seem to remember it just got waterlogged very quickly. Anyway, I think it'll be good journaling paper if nothing else. So I'm going to keep that to make journals with. And there's also my 8x8 paper here too. I haven't got much 8x8, just that. But yeah, I've got a ridiculous amount of 12x12. 12 12. I need to get making. Hello everyone. Oh dear, some of you are really going to hate me. The week has finished, but I haven't. The state of the room is still like this. It's pretty much worse than ever. <laughs> I really wanted to show you a finished area of my studio, I really really did, but life got in the way, I spent one day helping Rain with her car that was broken, also I've spent the last two days solid pretty much, editing the vlog you will have seen last week. Honestly, I really wanted to have done the anniversary, the celebrating our anniversary bit, I would have liked to have done that all in video, but our video labelling <laughs> on those old videos is absolutely atrocious and very difficult to find anything and basically 99% of what we filmed in those days was just the children so trying to find little clips of me and Chris together was near impossible and it just took me hours and then I gave up on videos and did photos and that took me hours as well because Lightroom was so slow but anyway, <laughs> I think I got a nice video in the end. Hopefully Chris will like it when he sees it in a few days time. Anyway, that's the end of this week's video. I'm really sorry about not showing you the completed bit of the room. Doing quite well, but uh, didn't quite manage it this week. So that's coming up in a video I'll do a bit of a tour maybe. Thank you ever so much for watching and spending your time with me. Thank you patrons for supporting these videos. It really makes such a difference and means a lot to me. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you again next week. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.